Good afternoon, um, I'm Ben and I'm from Hijinx. I'm one half of the um, creative um, hub of gin love that is Hijinx. Um, Claire and I are currently on opposite sides of the world, so um, we're getting together and doing the old Skype, which we've managed to put up some videos, but um, we're also doing our own odds and bits and pieces. Um, and I thought I was going to share with you this afternoon um, three of my favourite gins um, all bound together on a really warm, well, I say warm summer's day. Um, if you're in New Zealand, this is probably middle of winter. Um, it is the middle of winter, it's probably the same temperature. But this is what we're calling summer. Um, and we've got three citral-led gins um, that will um, refresh and cleanse you and cool you down um, throughout the joys of summer. So I'm just going to show you them quickly. Um, we've got Leith Gin from Leith in Edinburgh in Scotland. Duck and Crutch, quite a new, quite a young gin. Um, made in a shed in Kensington, probably about a mile and a half, two miles away from where I live here in Wandsworth. Um, yeah, both relatively young, um, as all, a lot of gin is. Um, and then from um, the Yarra Valley in Australia, one of my real favourites as well, this is Four Pillars um, Rare Dry Gin. Um, beautiful, beautiful stuff. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to talk you through the three of them um, and sort of compare different serves and um, talk about, you know, what you might do with each one. Um, start with the leaf. Um, the leaf for me is the sweetest of the three. Um, yeah, and you sort of get a little bit of that sort of sweetness on the nose. There's um, sort of baking spice in there. We've got nutmeg, we've got cinnamon, as well as all the classics. There's nothing in here that's really groundbreaking in terms of a botanical. Um, so the genius in it really is the combination, the love um, and the care that's gone into the um, process of making the gin, you know. Um, if you know, read out what it says in the thing. Juniper berries, coriander, angelica root, lemon and orange peels, licorice root, nutmeg, cinnamon, orris root and cassia bark. They're all completely standard botanicals. Um, and yet this is far from a standard gin. Um, we found literally nobody that dislikes this gin. No, I've never met somebody that says I don't like leaf gin. It's got the sweetness, it's got that depth to it. It's got enough juniper in it that it's unmistakably a gin. But it's got a sweetness to it that people who sort of are um, off put by an overly citr uh, overly juniper um, led gin, um, they can sort of find their way in. I call, I call this a bit of a gateway gin. Um, so we're going to have a little go at it. I'm going to make up a wee gin and tonic with it now. Um, I'm going to pour a drop in the glass and go for it neat. Opens out in the glass already as opposed to in the bottle. I lose I lose some of the sugar. I gain some juniper and I gain more of the kind of um, coriandery aspect, the citral aspect. It balances very well just coming into the open air. Um, mm. Still a pleasing amount of citrus, a little bit of heat there. Um, it's just, I talk about balance in a gin. You, um, what I mean by balance is if you think that your tongue has lots of different receptors, it has sweet, savoury, sour, all these different things, which is why there's actually some science in the fact, you know, when people joke that however full they are from their main course, they've always got room for dessert. Um, that is because it's about stimulating the um, palate, the different um, aspects of the tongue. Um, and so if you just eat, you know, a large steak and chips, um, you're still going to crave something sweet on the end um, to get a full sort of palate um, satisfaction. Um, so what we're looking for in a gin really is something that blends all of those things. Um, with leaf, we've got that. I'm just going to um, make it up into my preferred gin and tonic. So got an orange, just going to grab off a little bit of, um, a little bit of peel there. Um, I'm just going to go to my fridge because I've forgotten my tonic water, which has been embarrassing. Um, and if I had to pick one tonic, <laughs> in the world to drink the rest of my life. That would be quite sad. But if I had to pick one tonic to drink for the rest of my life, I'd probably pick Fever Tree Light because I just think it's a solid seven out of 10 for nearly every gin. Um, I don't think it's ever, it's, it's a very good tonic. Um, and I just, I, I, I just think it's a great all rounder. Um, so I'm gonna put in a little drop. I've got my table 
here, the other side of the camera. So don't feel like I'm pouring stuff into the screen. Um, got one ice cube because I'm only making a wee, wee gin and tonic. And it's important to note here, what I've done is I've actually done, in terms of a mix, um, I do about half and half or just over. Um, a lot of people drown their, um, they drown their gin and tonic. And I said, well, it doesn't really matter what gin you use, you know, by the time you've used all that tonic water. Um, it's about, you know, a sipping, a, a sipping quality rather than something you can neck back. You know, if you want a long drink just to refresh you in the summer, um, you can obviously pour more in. Um, but yeah, just just consider the um, fact that you might want to taste the gin that you, um, you're putting in there. Um, yeah. See what I get with Leith Gin. There's almost because of the um, the double the double citral here. We've got lemon and orange in there. You know, oranges and lemons. We've got that. Um, it's almost like a sort of with the sweetness. It's almost got that sort of childhood recall of a sherbetty, um, which is very pleasing. Um, it's a real crowd pleaser. It's very um, universal. And um, as I say, I don't know anybody who hasn't waxed lyrical about this. Um, yeah, so this is one to bring out at a party. Pe not a lot of people yet will have um, come across Legion, particularly south of the border, um, but they should have because it's fantastic. Um, and it's a crime that it's not stocked more widely down here in London. Um, this is refreshing, light, elegant, a hint of sweetness. Um, it, as I say, enough of the kind of savoury, um, you know, spice elements to it um, and the herb herbaceousness to it that it sort of doesn't just become, you know, a sugary vodka. Um, but it's not going to um, destroy you in terms of, you know, kind of being so junipery that it kind of leaves that dryness in the throat, which for some gins is quite nice. Um, you get a real dry down. This doesn't have the same level of dry down, but it has an exceptional balance um, across the palate, which I like. Mm. I just had to have one more sip. Um, we're going to go on now. We're going to go on to um, this one I found last year, Spirit of Christmas, um, which is an exhibition in Earl's Court, uh, which is, again, probably about you know mile, mile and a half from my flat. And um, so this is about oh, it's almost as close as we can get, really, to... Um, a local jinx. I, lo I love thinking local, uh, buying local produce where I can. Um, I, l I love that, um, supporting local communities um, and local enterprises. Um, and this is pretty local. I'll say it's no problem, no more than two miles away from my flat. Lovely guys. Um, and this one's slightly different. There's definitely a, um, when I'm just going to smell the bottle. Yeah, when I smell it, there's definitely a sort of citrus on the nose but it's got a very different character to it. There's less sweetness and more of a sort of, um, yeah, a sort of depth to it. Like it says vanilla and oak and things in there. There's, um, yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a more, there's a greater emphasis on the juniper and um, there's also a herbaceousness in there. Um, there's um, yeah, some thyme in there and bits and bobs that um, round it off that way. And again, what that does, like adding like um, green, like a herbaceous element into um, a gin as well, what it does is it lifts away sweetness, lifts away different things. So actually can lighten um, a, a gin up, which again, for the hot weather in the summer is exactly what we want. What we don't want is something cloying. You know, it's why we have red wine, in the, stereotypically red wine in the winter and white wine in the summer because we want something that lifts away and so that's what we have here with the duck and crutch um it's got that citral element and the um um herbaceous element that just lifts everything away and so you get that punch of the um juniper but it's very very well balanced so it's actually a very delicate um gin very light delicate you know um tiptoe of a gin really um which of course is dangerous because you know it's not a tiptoe because it's alcohol and what percentage are we on 45 40 yeah 45 so you know it's not to be not to be messed with um but yeah you know those drinks you used to have as a kid where you um would drink them well not as a kid but you know younger and um 
you'd have a bit and then you'd stand up and you'd realise that you'd drunk five and you were really, really drunk. Um, I can see that happening with Duck and Crutch. Um, also, because it just slips down so easily as a drink, it's, 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 it's spectacular. Um, yeah, it's really as light as a feather. Um, so for this, I'm going to maintain what I, I the, 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 the gins that I've picked um, are sort of all led by a sort of citrus vibe. So I'm going to bang in my bit of orange peel. But I've also got um, I've got some, some, one of my friends sent me some rosemary from her garden last week. Um, and of course, last week, that means it's sort of semi-dried now, which is actually quite good for gin because it sort of keeps all the aromatic element to it, but it sort of holds together. Um, whereas, you know, leaf sometimes in a gin, it can bruise and what have you, because you want to sort of give it a little, um, give it a little go just to sort of release the oils and what have you. Um, but, you know, sometimes when you get very fresh herbs, I find that um, you can bruise the leaves um, quite easily. So that's not always something I want to do. Um, again, I've got, I would say, probably a double shot of um, gin in there. And I'm not going to put much more than a double shot of tonic. Um, yeah, we're aiming for probably just over 50-50 here. Um, let it swill around the glass. Um, Let's see what we get. Yeah, now it slightly opens up that sweeter element. Um, you know, vanilla is something I talk about a lot. Um, that sort of comes later in the heart of the gin with the herbs. Um, you get a citral opening and then it sort of kind of drops down into something a lot deeper. Um, and that's quite exciting. I sort of talk about that a bit like, you know, watching The Simpsons. As a kid, you watch The Simpsons and it's a cartoon. Um, as an adult, you watch it and you get all the adult jokes and you're like, oh my gosh, like, I'm not going to let my kids watch that. And um, this, is, this is almost the same in a, in a way that you can, you get that level of sweetness and then you get something a bit more adult as it comes down in that sort of like open, deep, rich sort of way. Um, mm. Yeah, and it's got the right amount of sweetness, which lends itself to making, to being a very good um, gin and tonic gin. Um, it's it's not too um, acerbic in that way. It's just very light, very pleasing, very summery out on your balcony or in your garden, you know, if you're lucky enough to have a garden, um, all of that stuff. Um, just, yeah, it's very, very happy making, is a phrase I would say. So we move on to the third gin. Um, I get very excited about this one, Four Pillars. Um, the way I describe my love of Four Pillars is I say that I, where about two years ago, I went to the distillery in the Yarra Valley, um, Glendower, so just outside of Melbourne. And um, I got mugged on the way home and I, it was still the best day of my life. Um, so that's really everything you need to know about how, how much I enjoy the Four Pillars. Just as an aside, interestingly with the duck and crutch, and some, perhaps it's the rosemary in it as well, this has gone slightly cloudy. Um, that is not something to worry about in your gins, and I talk about this a lot. If your gin goes cloudy, that's really not a problem. What that is, is the oils releasing, either from the gin, like kind of being opened up by a tonic or whatever, or it could be from your garnish. You know, if you've got something that's oil heavy, like um, orange, um, lots of herbs have that. Lavender has loads of oils in it, for example. Um, those, that combination um, can, can I, that sort of de-emulsification um, can sort of happen. Um, and it doesn't affect the taste at all. Um, it's quite reassuring that you're drinking a product that actually has um, natural botanicals in. Um, I find that quite reassuring, you know? Um, four pillars, yes, yes, yes. Such a... Um, it's an individual gin. It's one of those ones I could spot it a mile off. And it's the combination, it's got, it's a lemon myrtle in it. Lemon myrtle, um, it's a bit of an alternative to um, sort of lemon balm, I guess, is the nearest thing we have. Um, but it's really sort of unique. It's almost got a sort of bubblegummy vibe, um, but in a much more adult way. I don't know, that's a way to describe it. Um, again, there's citrus in there. There's um, sweet spice in there. Um, but the, what the lemon balm gives you is it gives you that sense of, you know, kicking back 
um, relaxing, like, I, I smell this, and all of the tension leaves my body. Um, I really, yeah, it, it, it's just, it brings me into a very happy place. Um, and again, you know, like the other two, it's the balance of um, the kind of balmy elements, the spice, um, with a kind of um, citral sort of um, overhang. Um, so yeah, these are three incredibly well-balanced gins. Um, yeah, I get that sweet element much more in the glass, actually. Um, it's quite interesting. Yeah. And although the juniper is very, very present, and you get a little bit of that kind of um, warmth um, from it, um, there's so much other interesting stuff going on. Um, um, people who sit there and go, you know, all gin and tonics are the same, you can garnish it with whatever you want. I get very angry, um, very angry, because they're really missing out. Um, my favourite um, um, my favorite um, garnish for this, again, is a little wedge of um, orange peel. So I'm just going to do that very simply. What it shows, you know, people sit and go, what garnish goes with what gin? And it can get very scientific. But just pick out something. It's like, you know, pairing meats and herbs or, you know, pairing, you know, cheeses and um, jams. You know, it's have an experiment, have a, have, have, have a play, enjoy. Um, but if you've only got an orange, you can make that go around five or six different gins. You know, if you're the sort of person who has one piece of fruit and several gins in the house like me. Um, but you can you can sort of experiment. It isn't as set in gold, as set, set, set in iron as like um, that goes with that, that goes with that. Um, yeah, a little bit of tonic water. It's such an individual, um, it's almost creamy um, on the, it's those spices and you no. Know, it's like, inf I don't think there is vanilla in it, could be, but it's inferred vanilla because of the um, sweet spices that are in there. You sort of um, buy into the concept that there might be like that sort of creaminess in there. Um, it's, yeah, I'm calling it inferred, inferred flavoring, yeah. Yeah, and it is light as a feather as well, but with so many, it just, cleverly just touches all the points of the tongue you know all, all the different um the different bits um different senses and that's what's so pleasing um so when you have a spirit that literally is single minded like that that's why it's limited in its um scope really because it's only really um satisfying you know five or ten percent of your needs of your palate really um finding these gins that people have taken a lot of time a lot of love over you can then treat them very simply a bit of herb bit of orange because the work has been done for you um by these three wonderful gins um i just wanted to share them with you and if you are looking for um a gin to sort of sit in the sun with um you could do a lot worse than duck and crutch if you can get get hold of some of that if you're in west london four pillars is sort of widely available everywhere now um it's yeah it's become sort of very um, accessible in the UK um, and for those of you who are watching from New Zealand well Australia is next door so I'm pretty sure you can get four pillars in New Zealand. Leith Gin you have to work a bit harder um, if you're not in Scotland yet but isn't that the joy of it that you know um, those of you that are watching from Scotland um, have a little bit of a secret joy that the rest of us will find that bit harder. I mean that said you can just order it online. Um, the best garnish for all of these as well is sunshine and sea and open air. Um, that's that's what I bring with all of these vibrant, um, light, um, citral, refreshing gins. Um, so I hope that's given you an idea about how to go about picking your gins for the summer. Um, and yeah, you can really um, go to town, really experiment, really um, find different ways of doing things. Um, hope you've enjoyed this video.